Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about absolute motion analysis. So when analyzing rigid body motion beyond fixed axis rotation, uh, there's two general strategies that we can use. We can use absolute motion analysis or relative motion analysis. Uh, so in absolute motion analysis, a set of constraint equations is used to determine the position of a set point with respect to ground. And then once we have that position equation, we take the derivative to find the velocity and the derivative again to find acceleration. So we're going to be doing a lot of calculus with absolute motion analysis. Uh, in relative motion analysis, a series of equations uh, for the position, velocities, and accelerations of intermediate points leading up from the ground point to some point of interest is put together. Um, and the general polar motion equations are going to be used in that to describe velocities and accelerations, uh, allowing us to skip the uh, calculus part, uh, but they are going to be polar coordinates uh, in the r and theta directions. All right, so comparing these two methods, absolute, absolute motion analysis is going to involve calculus and particularly taking the derivative of some uh, larger functions. Uh, it does involve uh, does not involve coordinate transformation, so everything's going to be in x and y coordinates right from the start. Uh, and it's generally faster and easier for simple problems. Uh, relative motion analysis and the other problem does not involve calculus. Uh, we are simply going to be kind of plugging in pieces of an equation. Uh, it does involve coordinate transformations though. So things are going to be in r and theta directions. We're going to have to transfer those coordinate directions into x and y uh, before we can solve the problems. Uh, and generally I find relative motion analysis faster and easier for complex problems where there's kind of many stages to the, uh, the motion. All right, so jumping into absolute motion analysis. Uh, absolute motion analysis is based on geometry first uh, and then calculus. We want to relate position of some point to some origin point using geometric relationships. Uh, generally there's going to be a lot of sines and cosines in there. Uh, and it's similar to what we did with dependent motion analysis. Um, so the first step is to write out the equation for x and y positions of the point you're examining with respect to some stationary point. Uh, we do want to be careful, so any variables that are going to change over time must be left as variables. Any variables that really aren't variables, they're going to remain constant, uh, need, can be written in as numbers in our equations. All right, so in this arm, um, what's going to change and what's not going to change. All right, so we're looking down from the top of a robotic arm. Uh, the arm can rotate at point A and point B. So the things that will change over time is going to be that angle theta and that angle phi. Uh, what doesn't change over time? Well, L1 and L2. The length of the arm is going to remain a constant. All right, so looking at that whole thing, I've put in some values here. This would be the equation for the x position of point C. Uh, so I've got 2 cosine theta plus 1.5 cosine phi. Uh, notice that the 2 and the 1.5, the lengths, were constant, so they're numbers. And then the theta and phi are going to change over time, so those are variables. Uh, we do the same thing with y. We'd have 2 sine theta plus 1.5 sine phi. Uh, and this is my x and y position for point C with respect to the ground point uh, A at uh, the origin. All right, so once we have the equations for the position of the point of interest, we're going to take the derivative of that function. So um, we would take the derivative of xc to find the x velocity of point C, and we would take the derivative of the yc function with respect uh, to time to find the y velocity of that uh, point C over time. Uh, we take the derivative again uh, to find the acceleration in the x and y directions for point C. So once we have, uh, we, take our, we take our derivatives. So uh, going over the whole process, you're going to start by creating a diagram of the body with key distances and angles labeled. Uh, be sure to identify what distances or angles are constant and which ones are going to change over time. Uh, next, you pick a point for analysis. So uh, that was the point C on the end of the arm of the, our robot there. Uh, and then you're going to write out an equation for the x and y position of that point with relation to a fixed origin point. Uh, so you want to put your origin on the diagram as well. Um, any distance, any, sorry, any constant distances or angles can be put into the, those equations, those position equations, as numbers. Anything that changes must be left as a variable. Finally, you take the derivative of the position equations to find the equations for the x and y velocities of your chosen point. 
and you take the derivative of the velocity equations that you just found to find the x and y accelerations of your chosen point. Um, finally, we're going to have this set of six equations in 2D, so two position equations, two velocity equations, and two acceleration equations. Uh, so anything that we know, we can plug into those equations. Anything we don't know, uh, we are going to be able to solve for uh, in our equations. So that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.